Dear future daughter, I want to tell you about your great great grandma, also known as Grandma. might not actually be a daughter and that's fine but there is a tradition in grandma's family that everyone has two girls let me explain we are a big family of jewish women and it all starts with grandma as the root of our family of course there are men and fathers in the family too but all the men are in-laws and as much as we love them let's focus on the women of the family grandma had two daughters judy and anne Then Judy had two daughters, Debbie and Sharon, and Anne also had two daughters, Carrie and Nicole. And so Grandma had four granddaughters. Debbie then had two daughters, Hannah, that's me, and Leah. Sharon had Evie and Dania. Carrie had two daughters, Alana and Shauna, and Nicole had Una and Orla. And so there were eight great-granddaughters of Grandma. Grandma was born on the 31st of December, 1914. Where were you born? In Suhl, in Germany. Our house was beautiful. I've still got beautiful photographs of it. One of the loveliest houses in Suhl. Grandma came to England in 1932. Yeah, it was a most unusual thing for any mother and father to decide for a girl of 17 to send from a little provincial town of Seoul to send her away to London to this cosmopolitan place. In 1934, Grandma met her future husband, Heinz, a.k.a. Henry, a.k.a. Boo. I met Heinz in Leeds. My family that I was looking after their boy, it was a couple and they had one young boy and they decided to move to Leeds so I moved with them. Leeds had a very big Jewish community. She was going to a Jewish uh, dance in Leeds and in those days the trams in Leeds had seats where people sat opposite each other. My dad was going to the same dance. He said to her friend, I like the look of him in German. He understood that, gave a wry smile, and they both ended up coming into the same place, which was the uh, Jewish Institute. When you can speak another language, very often you don't think that other people can speak it. So Grandma said to her friend, Oh, he's very good looking. Boo said, I've just got to finish with my girlfriend because I want you. <laughs> Two weeks later, they got engaged. She wrote to her parents how she met this wonderful man who could dive from the top board and played the piano fantastically and her father wrote back come home immediately which she didn't and they got married and lived 49 very happy years and then in february 1943 judy was born she was a lovely mom very caring and um, yeah understanding but that was my mum kindness, wanting to please everybody, always thanking people for their presence, always thanking people for their cards. I mean, that's another aspect of what Grandma's done. She's always given to other people, hasn't she? Yeah. Visited people, did loads of them, setting up the Friendship Club, mm. always did so much for um, the Jewish old people's home. She made everybody feel very special, you yeah. know, that, that, that she had this ability to make you feel you were the number one. She was always just so happy and willing and wanting to make everybody else feel good, you know, and that's just something that was really inspirational to think about her. Didn't ever make judgment of anybody. She was the most tolerant person and kind and very appreciative of everything anyone did. If the conversation got onto yoga, which it often did, and someone like Evie would perform a new move that she'd um, realised she could do, like uh, sitting down and touching her toes uh, without 
bending her knees and grandma would just get up and do exactly the same. She would um, be able to touch her toes even when she had gone into the 100s. So. Yeah, well, yeah. she was always very competitive with mm, yoga. Yeah. She loved being better than the younger generations, didn't she? Was. She, and, and she oh, yeah. was. She was. Yeah, she was over 100 and she'd be sitting in her armchair. She was probably about 102 and she'd go, Oh look girls, and she'd just be lifting her leg like this, you know, or doing trying to do the lotus position. I just remember trying to do the full lotus and like learning to do yeah. the full lotus because of her and thinking that like as a very flexible child, it's like, oh I can do the full lotus, I'm now like the queen of yoga. <laughs> like that's all I need to know, I've peaked at yoga. And the kids would always get into a really difficult yoga position instantly and she would be screaming, no you must warm up, stretch before you get into those positions. You always did the splits didn't you and she would almost cry. I guess for me the fact that I started to train to be a yoga teacher, I feel very much that through yoga, which was a big passion of grandma's, it's past something to me that I feel really proud of in, in legacy. I suppose uh, my favourite memories of Mama are, are to do with family events, um, Pesach and New Year, which was her birthday. From when I was young, she always used to invite people to our home for dinner, for special occasions. And we would have Passover and uh, Jewish New Year and she would invite friends to sit around the table with us. And then she'd invite people we didn't know, strangers who had nowhere to go. I never really understood why she did it at the time, but I do now. Her generosity was in abundance. My favorite memory of grandma is probably emerging of lots of memories which is arriving in her flat, starving hungry to the smells of absolutely gorgeous home-cooked food. She was such a good cook. Uh, Friday nights were incredible, the food she would make. And she would cater for everybody. We would have meals for 20, 30 people and she would just make that look really easy. The kitchen hatch and all my favourite, favourite food coming through, lovingly prepared and lovingly served for everybody. I've been a vegetarian since I was 11. I was absolutely right, never eating meat again, that's it. And then grandma would go, chicken soup? And that would be it, I would be off. I remember, I'm sure she was sieving it a lot, removed like all the chicken, and I'd be like, well, I'm not actually eating chicken, so that's okay, you know. One of my proudest moments was sharing my chicken soup that I'd made with grandma Helen and that she actually really enjoyed it. My daughter makes chicken soup like yours. Is it as good as yours? Yes. I just remember chicken soup. That's like one of my vivid memories. Chicken soup, pretending to be ill. Lemon cake. Lemon cake. Lemon cake. Grandma always used to make lemon cake. That was just her thing. Uh, well, my favorite memory with grandma is having fish and chips with her every time we go and visit her. And she'd always make like very, very happy noises when eating them. She used to enjoy every mouthful, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. And she'd be like, mmm. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. My favourite memory is always like when we'd go round and she'd hide. She did play hide and seek with me when I was younger. Um, and that was brilliant. We loved it, always. Go open the left, she'd press the buzzer so you could come in. And then the front door would always be open. And she'd be like, oh, I'm here, where am I? <laughs> sort of thing, and then you'd go in. So you'd just let yourself in and then she jumps out at you. I think she'd call when, you, when you're at the Ooh, door. Yeah, that's like fun. that. <laughs> I can never remember where she hid though. Because in, the, in the cupboard. In the cupboard, in the cupboard on the left. Was it always the same place? It's that yeah. broom cupboard yeah. thing on the left. And all... that never got old. <laughs> no. <laughs> I remember one time she was under her dressing table. <laughs> sort of aged. She must have been about 90. And we were with Auntie Anne and Newsy and everyone being like, no, no, you can't do that. And like, watch yourself. She's like, fine. <laughs> but then we'd still take like ages to find her. Yes. Just like, where's grandma? <laughs> can't find grandma. <laughs> Um, but the importance of family, like how lucky we are, because not yeah. not everyone has the kind of family that we have or the relationship with their relatives that we have. It's absolutely credit to grandma that we all even know each other because, I mean, most people, they wouldn't know their second cousins, their parents' cousins. But she was like, I don't know, like the ultimate matriarch. She yeah, was, she yeah. was, yeah. And like, we were never told that it was 
weird to be a woman. That sounds really weird to say, but that that it was out of the ordinary. That it was out of the ordinary to have so many yeah. strong women in one family, and she yeah. was yeah. she was grandma. She was like, she was grandma for anyone. Yeah, no, yeah. no matter what, grandma was just the the like glue that held us together. I guess. Thank you so much for your lovely birthday wishes, and I hope they will all come true. Thank you from Grandma. So it's Judy to Annie, Carrie to Nikki, Nikki to Judy, Judy to Sharon, Hannah to Leah, it's Evie to Dania, Alana to Shauna, Shauna to Una, and it's all thanks to you. And boo!